For thousands of years, the Potentum, a secret wizarding organization, have lived in the shadows. This organization holds secret wizarding skills and magics only accessible to the most elite among wizards. They have created things like the monuments of Egypt and great stone obelisks, and you're going to see their symbols illustrated by a shield and two crossing wands. Legend has it that two wizarding friends had a little duel, and those were the two founders of the Potentum, and now to enter the secret organization, you will have to fight amongst your rival in order to obtain the wizarding title of Potentum. Only one of you will be able to join the ranks of this secret group. Are you prepared to take a leap and join, or will you suffice to just being an average wizard? Let's go ahead and take a look at this wizarding game of dueling uh, shenanigans. That's Wizard is a two-player card or and deck building game of sorts. You're basically crafting a set of seven cards and you're going to be utilizing five of those per round and you'll be competing in three separate rounds or games as you will. You're going to have a certain amount of stamina and if you can reduce your opponent to zero stamina, you will win. Everybody gets a deck of cards to choose from as they pick seven cards from among them, and there are certain rules as to what spells you can take based on the previous spells you have. Once you have your seven spells set up, your opponent does as well, you're going to choose five of those seven, and then you're going to go back and forth spending your wizarding power in order to cast the spells on your opponents or on yourself. There's also some lasting effects that will stay in play for a certain period of time, and your objective, of course, is to outright destroy your opponent or simply whittle him to death with magical spells until their stamina reaches nothing at all and you become a part of the Botentum. The game is roughly about 30 to 45 minutes to play and it's probably about ages 12 or 13 and up. That's the basics of the game. Let's get into showing you what the components are down below. I'll give you a brief synopsis of how to play and then we'll come up and I'll give you my review for this wizarding magical dueling game. Here is That's Wizard and I'm not exactly sure why they call it That's Wizard. Uh, I'm guessing perhaps that this is just what the wizarding community is like in this specific world. But uh, regardless, this is wizard. That's wizard right there. And what you're going to be getting in the game is fairly simple. You're going to be getting two separate, separate decks of cards. One is the yellow deck and one is the blue deck. And both decks are exactly the same. You're going to be getting a focus card and a counter spell card that is going to be separate from your hand of seven that you'll choose from. And then you get a separate set of artifacts as well as familiars. These are things that you can use to amp up the game in a variety of ways. You can set those aside and you'll use them in the advanced setting. You're only going to be using the basic deck of cards, which is illustrated by the bottom right hand corner. These are going to have these little symbols here with a one, two, three, and even a four. Select your set of seven cards, and the only rule to follow is if you want a three from a specific set, you're going to need the two and the one. If you want a four, you'll need a three, two, and a one. If you want a two, you'll need the one. So as you want to progress down a certain mastery, you're going to need to have the previous mastery spells in order to get there. Focus and Counterspell will be added to your hand later, so you'll have your seven cards, and you'll add these two. You'll select two cards that aren't the Focus and Counterspell and set them aside for the first specific game, kind of like a sideboard in Magic the Gathering. And then you're going to set your power to 10 and your stamina to 20, and you're going to have this little dial here which you can set to zero and you're ready to play the game. Make sure you have a set of these mystical time tokens, which will indicate how long your spells will last if they stay on the field, and put a die next to each player. They have a color-coded die for yellow and for blue. And the game's easy. All you're going to basically be doing is, without explaining the full rules in detail, is placing out cards face down simultaneously, selecting a number based on the power that you'd like to use, based on what the card lets you do, revealing at the same time, spending the power, and then based on whoever spent the least amount of power, that spell will trigger first. After that, you're going to adjust anything, whether it be stamina, whether it be power, or whether, whether it be you taking some type of like loss, which is like fatigue, and of course, the spells that stay in play. If you have a spell that stays in play, I'll go ahead and look for one really quick here, like for instance, invisibility, you'll pay a specific power, you'll read what the card says, you'll put a specific number of power tokens on that card, and at the end of every turn, after this turn, you're going to basically remove one of these counter tokens until they're all removed, and the card goes back into your hand. Whenever you play a card, regardless whether it's targeting your opponent or yourself, or if it's on the field, after it's done being resolved, it's going to come back to your hand. 
You're going to use the power based on your power marker in order to spend that power. And when it hits zero, you can't spend or cast any more spells. So you'll probably have to focus or counter spell. If you focus, you can go back to 10, but you're basically losing your turn and you're available to be attacked. And then counterspelling, well, when you're basically playing a counterspell, it's free and it does counter any spell that's played against you. However, the cost is one health. And if you play it more than once in a row, it's going to increase exponentially ex 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 <laughs> with plus one. So on your third turn of playing Counterspell in a row, you'll take three damage as opposed to two on your second or just one on the first. However, if you play Counterspell, you play a spell and then you play another Counterspell, both those Counterspells are just going to cost one. All the spells do something different and they function in a unique way and with the combinations you have available to you, you can make your own wizarding deck for the duel. Play through one round or one game till somebody hits zero stamina, play through another and then another and the best two out of three is the winner in That's Wizard. A pretty simple, straightforward game. We'll come up and discuss my review. We'll talk about a little, a little bit about the cards in detail and uh, then we will let you know what you th whether you want to pick it up or not. You can go ahead and check out the link below in the description on the Kickstarter, which will be available to you to pick up the game that's wizard let's discuss that's wizard and the first thing i thought of is it's a two-player game in which you're going to be playing with and against another player attempting to reduce their health down now there's a ton of games i've seen that have that same idea but this one's actually quite different in this one you are using your mana to influence your spells to cast on your opponents or on yourself and thusly hurt them or help yourself. Just like in Magic the Gathering you'll have a certain amount of health and you'll use your monsters to do that kind of stuff. This one has that general theme. But what's unique about this one here is one card is a counter spell and it's free and the other card is one of those focus cards that lets you get all of your mana back and each of the cards in the deck of cards you're going to be getting here has a unique type of way that you can win the game uh for instance and i can even show you the book here really quickly what i thought was excellent is the fact that they have unique characters in the book here with their own preset decks and you can go ahead and choose between them and you can see the different types of strategies and how you can sideboard your cards in those two that you set out aside for the first game you can sideboard those in if you want for the next game to trick your opponent and each of these has a unique style of play with them for instance i was playing as the crone who has shock chaos mind control stun and reflect and what one of those spells does is it actually reduces your opponent's power instead of stamina. And then mind control might cost 8, 9, or 10 power, but you subtract 8 from whatever you pay, and if your opponent has that much power or less, you instantly win the game. There's also cards like Death, or uh, there's another one that's called Polymorph, where you can turn your opponent into a sheep, sort of, and you can kill your opponent instantly at the cost of a lot of mana or a lot of power and utilizing those cards are really powerful. However, your opponent has to have a certain amount of health in order for those to enact their consequences. So for instance, if your opponent is at eight or less health, you can cast death and they will instantly be removed from the game. But if they manage to heal themselves up two points of health or whatever it might be, and then you cast death slower, then all of your mana or your power has been depleted because of the counter spell or, or, or because of they gained the health and you've lost that card. Speaking of the counter spell card, this little baby here is really, really powerful, but it's also one of those double-edged swords. You can counter spell your opponent's spells over and over and over again and reduce their power over and over and over again. However, you can't counter spell the focus. And if you keep counter spelling, you're going to take damage. And that brings me to my next point, dueling. Dueling is so important in this game. And what I mean by dueling is that you're actually going head to head with your opponent and it's not just about what cards you play, but about what cards they're going to play. You have to counter what they play or you will fail. There was multiple times I tried to mind control my opponent and they had the power available to them, uh, available to me to make sure that, that spell would go off and they would counter spell my mind control, thusly reducing my power to nothing, allowing them to focus the next round. And after all using all of that power, they had all the power previously used to do damage to me. So my strategy of an instant win or a get rich quick scheme didn't work because I wasn't reading my opponents the best way I possibly could. And I played that strategy throughout the entire game up until the third attempt to try and mind control my opponent. I decided I'll trick them, make them think I'm gonna mind control, counter spell, 
or or instead of counterspell, maybe play a card that only does one damage, and then next turn mind control them so they're not going to see it coming. And they predicted my spell, and instead they focused and gained back all of their power. Thusly, I could not mind control my opponent. And so the way in which you play spells is so important. How you choose to play them, when you choose to play them, and utilizing your deck. Speaking of your deck, let's talk about the sideboard. Your sideboard is just two cards. That's all it is. And what's really interesting about your sideboard is the fact that in order to get your seven cards, you have to have a one, two, and a three to get a four, right? Or a one and a two to get a three. Your sideboard could hold the three and the two, which means in your deck that you start playing with, you might have only the one and the four. So your opponents might never see that four coming. All of a sudden they get mind controlled when they never saw the previous spells because they were in your sideboard or because you chose not to play them. And you have two different routes about how you want to play. And by the third game, your opponent kind of knows what you have in your hand, unless you've stuck to the same strategy for multiple attempts. That reminds me of Magic the Gathering and your sideboard deck of 15 cards, how you can slide them in and change your deck up or utilize those cards to in some way influence your opponent because you're attempting to mess with your opponent with your sideboard whether it be to counterspell the cards that you previously didn't have in your deck to do so maybe your opponent was playing black right and then you have a bunch of anti-black cards in your side deck and you place them in well this game is like that in one sense but it really what it does is it changes your strategy of overall victory and then makes your opponent think about what type of cards you're playing and how best to deal with them based on the cards they have in their arsenal do you play with your two extra sideboard cards and switch out two others it's really a tough decision in between the rounds of the game the last thing i want to note is the artwork i instantly noticed that this artwork is great in fact i looked at the artist just to see and i saw uh jamie nobel fryer who's got some great artwork i've seen some of his games before and i like his style and i also noticed that there was a ton of artists involved in this game i give them all a shout out but there's quite a few of them and i don't actually know who they all are maybe i'll put them on my artist site on my website i think that'd be pretty cool in fact i think i have jamie on there right now but overall the artwork is very solid for this game i think all the artwork is actually already done it's very very vibrant it's very very wizardly and all the spells are beautiful i'll go ahead and post a couple pictures here to show you just how stylistic and wonderful the artwork is but yes they are all very nice and represent the cards very well another thing to note too is the card quality oh excuse me and the different styles of clockwork pieces here which are going to be really nice i imagine just in this game here is one of the game crafter versions which i'm surprised they actually have the new little dials here very very nice work very well and these work very well in the game as well a good way to de de detail what your health is and your power is and of course your secret amount of spe spell power that you want to use because that makes a difference in turn order as well as your opponent kind of knows how much you have but not how much you're going to spend and your spells have a different cost to them as to how you want to play them so it does make a difference if you want to shock your opponent for one or two based on who goes first because that can make the difference between winning or losing the game and in fact for me it did so a lot of things to go ahead to think about and of course i like the card quality and all the stylistic choices of making this game it's very nice for a two-player head-to-head game if you like that harry potter or hogwarts dueling style game with the cards this one has the same feel as that one i feel like most people who enjoy that game are going to like this game as well it has that head-to-head -head dueling feel where you're learning about what cards you're getting and what cards your opponents are getting and how to deal with them this one's just a little more condensed in the fact that there's a certain amount of cards you have and you're making a deck based on those and there's a back and a Fourth. Replayability on this is fairly good. I mean, obviously, there's only a certain amount of cards you get in your deck, and that limits to the amount of different combinations. But what's here is quite a lot, and since you're only using seven cards, you can theoretically at least get away with, I don't know, 10 games with very specific sets as well as choosing to make your own or using the ones in the rule book which gives you a ton of options and choices and as long as you don't mind head-to-head -head dueling games this game has almost infinite replayability as far as whether it gets stale or not i guess that's gonna be based on the player who plays the game if you don't mind a competitive card game in which you are going back and forth and dueling this game can be played over and over again and you're gonna have a good time each and every time because of the amount of strategy it's also a good choice for those of you who want to play some type of tcg or deck building or those kind of things but don't want to spend a large amount of money this is going to give you that opportunity to make your deck of cards play a deck of cards in a quick few games and then you're good you're ready to go and do something else overall this is a solid game beautiful artwork a lot of fun and i love the choices of mechanisms they use with the clocks for the power and the stamina and your secret bidding a nice little touch solid game overall check a look down below link in the description to pick it up if you'd like to let me know what you think about that's wizard down below in the comment section i'm curious 
curious to hear what you have to think about a dueling game. Is this one similar to the Hogwarts game? Is it something you'd be willing to pick up? Why or why not? Thank you guys so much for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game That's Wizard. If you would like to pick it up, like I said before, down below, link in the description. Like, comment, and subscribe and hit that bell notification. We do appreciate it. We really enjoy the fact that you guys are watching these videos and giving us critiques and comments down below, as well as checking our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter links, and more. Every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST, we've got a live stream, and of course, we have a Discord and a Patreon, which I'll also have links in the description. That's all I got for you this time, guys, and as always, I look forward to dueling with you in a wizarding battle to the death with you. It doesn't sound exactly that enjoyable. How about if we just pretend to duel for a battle to the death with you next time?